you know, my mom, she got that information, she cried, and then she went inside, the, brought us all in the room and gave us a motivational talk. And she was like, we're going to get out of here. I'm going to get a car. I'm going to get a job. I'm gonna... She started naming all the stuff she's going to get. I'm like, this lady crazy. We're in the shelter. <laughs> but her vision, right? So she had the vision and nobody saw it but her and God. And, you know, when she got the car, when she got the job, I said, hold on, man. This, this work ethic and speaking things to existence, this is real. And then, you know, that's kind of where I got the mindset uh, uh, about being positive and, and just trying to figure things out um, with, 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 with having mentors and just having people guide you and just taking advice the right way. So, you know, my, my background was rough, you know, um, but I didn't allow that to, to, to stop me from moving, you know. Who did you go to? I mean, growing up, you know, I'm from the hood, so we was always taught that if you don't grow up being smart or, you know, playing sports, you don't make it in either one of them it's like you already know the next route right well you know drugs you know selling drugs just doing what we're not really supposed to do so i went to this school off of uh 22nd avenue 103rd called miami park elementary uh i was bad d student you know i used to always crack jokes i used to go to school literally for lunch and p.e lunch and pe so guys just know if you if you went to school for lunch and pe you're gonna be successful don't worry <laughs> um that was the elementary school in miami and then i went to madison middle and um that is crazy you asking me that man i went back to my old uh neighborhood man and a lot changed but madison middle was a game changer we used to i used to fight a lot and um it was these two boys walking. They used to walk the same route. I was dumb. They walked the same route as me. And um, my homeboy was like, man, I bet you won't hit him. And here I go, peer pressure. Hit the, hit, hit the kid. And then his brother started acting up. I hit his brother. And then I just ran. They didn't tell me, don't run to the house. I ran to the house. They watched me run to the house. Two hours later, the parents, the mom knocked on my door like, Hello, lady ain't speak no English. The lady ain't speak no English came. She said, hey, you know, your son hit my son. Yada, yada, yada. Make fast forward. My mom called me to the, um, you know, when your heart start beating, when your mom called, you know you just did something wrong. So my heart start beating and then my mom literally, check this out, bro. Middle school, my mom called the police on me. She called the police on me, the police, and we know in the hood, that's a rule. You don't call, you don't call the police on your family member. So she called the police on me, and the police officer took me in the car. Bro, I'm crying, crying, crying. Took me in the car, took me around to the park, and just had a real conversation with me. But if my mom didn't call the police on me, I would have, you know, I would have been doing the same exact thing. So, mom, if you're watching this interview, I know you will. I love you. Just thank you for giving us that tough love and that's why I'm so tough now because you know I think people people need that um, because they got to know their worth so how do you go from working in corporate America to like being an entrepreneur like have you always been an entrepreneur or you know how do you go from one mindset to a whole nother mindset well I didn't know this back then but when I was 12 I had a why Right. So at 12, my mom thought I was going to play basketball Saturday morning at six o'clock, but I wasn't going to play basketball. I was cutting grass. You know, at 12, I was making eighty dollars a week. Now, at 12, that's a lot of money. But I also realized when I got older, I shouldn't have gave my mom, you know, Jamaican moms. They feel like they own you, your paycheck, everything you got. They own it because they born you. Um, but at 12, I was making eighty dollars a week and um, I was literally giving my mom all my money right and um i should have gave a 40 and cut 40 but uh but that was the work ethic that i learned because i would never forget the guy name was gary um i used to always walk and i see this guy cutting grass and i was like look at this crazy guy cutting grass with with with, with, with long pants on yeah when he hired me to, to cut grass i saw why he was wearing long pants they had this thing called it's called the weed eater if you don't know anything about the weed eater Bro, it was tearing my legs up. I had pelts, blood. The next day, you know I wore them long pants. And everybody was laughing at me, but I was good. 
So uh, that's where the work ethic came from uh, when I was 12. And then by the time I became an adult, I was on my own at 17, guys. At 17, um, I had a choice whether to go live with my mom in Tallahassee um, or stay down here in South Florida. And I had a lot of friends, girls, uh, girlfriends, and I wanted to stay down here. And at 17, when everybody was going to party, I was getting ready for work, you know. So that was really what really changed my life and, ta and taught me massive work ethic and you're gonna have to make some sacrifices to get what you really want so while my homeboys were playing basketball going to parties doing that I was getting ready for work trying to work extra hours because I was taking help and taking care of my brothers um, so two of them was older than me and my youngest brother uh, obviously but I was I took on a nice uh, role even when we worked at the call center you know what I'm saying together I was I was helping my brothers at that time you know how long did you work at the call center? And, um, um, I think I worked there maybe like 10 years, maybe 11 years, you know. Uh, and the crazy thing with the call center, I don't know if you remember, man, I was I was asking. I had dreads. I had goals in my mind. I was dressing, you know, thug life, you know. Um, again, I was a product of the product. And then I was, uh, I was, I would go to Pep. And I said, man, I'm going to be a supervisor. That man, Pep laughed. Uh, 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 Paul laughed. Uh, I don't think Mel laughed or, or, uh, or, or Izzy, but uh, everybody laughed. And um, and then I, I went back again. Now, I did that for th bro, that's a good question. I did that for three years. So, if you're a network marketer, if you're a business owner, or if you want to get into business, guys, sometimes you have to. You have to be consistent, you got to be assertive, you got to never give up. Everybody laughed at me that I wasn't going to be a supervisor. So I went to him and I said, Pep, what do I have to do? He said, well, you know, you got to look the part, Kevin. You know, look at your hair. Look at your clothes. That was a hard conversation. I, I took that shit personal. Look at your hair. Look at how you look. He said, who, 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 who could you, who, who's going to, who's going to work for you like that? I was like, you know what? You're right. Then the following a couple of weeks, I cut my hair. I started changing. I started going to, I went to the Goodwill. I started buying ties. I started buying clothes, right? We didn't look this good now, right? But I made the sacrifice because I knew I wanted to be, and when everybody laughed, that's when I knew I was going to do it because nobody believed. And that's the same mindset I have in network marketing. Um, nobody believed. Nobody believed in you. And we just, we just kept pushing. And then when I was 22 years old, Pep made me a supervisor. I know even 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 my colleagues, they were like, bro, how the hell you became a supervisor? Bro, three years in a row, I asked. So 10 years and then three years straight asking to be a supervisor and I got rejected. And then the last year, he was like, all right, man, we got a supervisor opportunity. I said, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. He was like, you don't even know how much it costs. I said, I don't care how much it's gonna cost because I know what I'm gonna become. That process, that leadership, it taught me. Then I had to start reading books, and you know, I started motivational speaking and all of that stuff. So, good question, man. Hey, you digging? Hey, hey, man, you digging too deep, man? It's live. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> uh, question, uh, What's what up? Got what got me into network marketing? Um, um, hmm. What got me into network marketing? So somebody reached out to me about this company called Prime America, right? Insurance, life insurance. So the guy, the guy, who the who? I don't even know who that was. Whoever that was, man, shouts out to you because that was the that taught me uh, leverage. That taught me uh, uh, there's a way I could build a business and make money with other people and do a network. And um, I went to a Prime America meeting. And we had a, there was a test. Um, there was a test that was going, they, no, I went to a Prime American meeting and the guy told me, man, you got to take this test for your license. I failed the test the first time. I failed the test again. I was heartbroken. And then I went to his office and he was like, I'll just bring people and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll explain it to him. Bruh, I brought people to the office. People signed up for the life insurance. They did, I did not have my license. Guess what all the leads and the residual went to that guy. 
And that's why I'm so helpful with people to do the right thing because I, I, I realize people will take advantage of you in, 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 in any industry if you allow them to. But I learned that if there is a service that somebody need and you can get it to them and make money, it's, it's a win-win. And then I was introduced to, to residual income. And then fast forward after net after the, 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 the prior America, that's when a good friend of mine, Mr. Eddie Brown, reached out to me about uh, this other network marketing company. And um, you know, that's that's when that was back in babe, when did we when, when did I start the um um that company? Like like two 2011, 2012 is when I really got into the prior network marketing company and that training chain. And that's what I knew. I knew more important than the money was developing and training. More important was was more about mindset and personal development. If I had to get that that's back in 2012. So. Um, yeah, basically been in the industry for about, seems like almost eight, 10 years. Wow. I wouldn't say 10 years straight. If I had to say total, because I took like a, a, a massive gap. Maybe maybe solid four or five years. I'll say six if, if I want to if I want to count that that uh <laughs> that prime America crap. You know what I'm saying? All right. So what made you take a break? Oh, you know, uh, uh, besides my wife. I hope this ain't live. <laughs> she gonna she gonna check this out later. But um, um, what happened was my my integrity. You know, like there are some things that I did, I just didn't agree with, right? In the in in that company, um, that marketplace was doing certain things. I just didn't I didn't feel I had to do. I'm a man of God. I didn't feel like I had to do all of that to get promoted. I didn't feel like I had to do this and that just to get promoted. So. Uh, I just had to take a break and then I felt like I was I was putting more time into it and not getting the right return if that makes sense I quit I had quit my job I did everything right um, but the business wasn't going the way I thought it was gonna go and um, the top leadership left to another company they changed the comp plan that was one of the big things they changed the comp plan and that, that messed everything up for a lot of people and then I just like man I'm about to go get a job but the good thing about that was when I got the job, I said, you know what? I'm going to get a job in something that I want to get a job in. And that's what led me to uh, the marketing company. So how did you, I mean, let's, let's talk about um, your success now. I'm like, um, seeing you had a lot of success. You got here killing it. You know, what would you say a person, what kind of mindset they have to have to be successful in this industry? Well, in business period, you know, um, the mindset you got to have is, 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 is bulletproof. You know, I had to learn not to, uh, well, books, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, rich dad, poor dad, powerful book changed my life. Um, the Bible, <laughs> of course, uh, changed my life. Um, um, another book that really helped me, um, uh, how to win friends and influence people, Dale Carnegie. Uh, that changed my life and um, if I had to say to somebody brand new what like the mindset they got to have personal development read as much as you can watch motivational videos every single day every single day every single day why because we're positive people in a negative world you know you mentioned something earlier about the coronavirus and there's two type of humans right now there's one with a scarcity mentality what am I gonna do you remember in the Bible you know, they, they was given, a, the, you know, the story with the three talents. Two of them went and multiplied it, right? The other one, he buried it, but nothing multiplied. So this people right now, they can use the money that they have to invest into a business to help create more, or they could be scared about the coronavirus. I tell people all the time, when the coronavirus is over, your credit is still going to be bad. You're still going to need to create something for your for your own so if I had to tell somebody that's brand new what to do um, follow whatever your mentor is telling you um, focus more on personal development than the money and don't adopt the opinions 
of people that are broke. That's hard. That's hard. That's very hard because some of those opinions could come from people that you love. Some could come from people that you trust. So, you know, a lot of people take those opinions. And we always say, if you don't buy someone's opinion, then you don't want to buy their lifestyle. Exactly. So, um, one last question. I'll probably a few more questions just before we wrap it up. <laughs> Um, what what would you have say for a suggestion for someone that's right now going through what they're going through? I think there's over tens of thousands of jobs are being lost. Um, I see people out there, you know, like I said, we were talking about toilet paper on a paper towel, on what's going on. But what would you say for someone who's probably losing their job or maybe need to make additional income? What are some of the options out there? Well, we got we got to think about the climate that we're in. You know, um, think about think about this. You know, in 2018, um, January 6, 2018, I planted my flag in this business. You know, I was disrespected at my job. I went in the car and prayed. A few days later, you and Alpha reached out to me. So, if I would say, what would I say to that person? Be open, right? Because opportunities are coming. The government is for forcing the government is forcing people to work from home again it's two type of humans someone that's scarcity or someone that's seeing this as an opportunity why are so many people signing up as agents to work from home to do this and some of the same people i've spoke to previously about working from home so if i had to say to them just be open because you've been praying for something but God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. So the fact that you've been praying for something and you're going into unknown, right? Remember when, when a person first started a job, they didn't know. When we first started the call center, we, we didn't know what to do. We just got a script and we trusted the person that was training us. So I would tell them, bet on yourself. You already bet, you, you, you let your job, you let the gov, you bet on the government. Now it's time to bet on yourself. People that you got your tax return, you can't go nowhere. You quarantine, so you can't even spend it. Invest it 288 into you, right? Don't give it to Jordan. It's nothing wrong with Jordan. It's nothing wrong with LeBron. Don't give it to LeBron James. Don't give it to the weed man, right? Do what you gotta do, right? To invest this into yourself and take a chance on you, because if you and Alfred didn't tell me about this, mind you, when I left that condo, my wife was like, "Don't do it. Don't do it." Don't do it. And that goes back to the original question. Even if we even if I'm talking to somebody right now, this is for them. And you know, they know they need to do something. They shouldn't adopt the opinions of them. You got to people have to know like what you what's for you is for you. So take that leap of faith, like invest into yourself. And overall, working from home is the future, pimp. I don't care what you tell me. I make more money from home then when I worked in my job and you get a chance to spend more time with your family. So I don't know who this is for, but imagine you could spend more time. Look at this. Mr. Bruce Lee Rochester, million dollar earner. I'm a six figure earner. We're with our families. It's people right now that are forced to go to work in an environment that's not conducive to where they want to be. And they're going to be exposed. So I would just tell them, man, bet on you. Sell, sell whatever you got to sell. And, bet. and, it, and it, it doesn't have to be our business. It could be any business. Right? It could be whatever you want. All I'm telling them, bet on you, man. Just bet on you and get you a mentor. And don't get you a mentor. Some, I was talking to somebody one day. This freaking dude taking advice from his uncle who's in construction. Bro, I know that's your uncle. But you want to be in construction your whole life? Stop adopting that opinion, bro. I'm telling you right now, I'm a six-figure earner. I'm going to take you where you need to go. Only thing your uncle going to tell you is how to go get water out of this damn jug because he over here uh, shoveling stuff. Now, you can listen to him or you can listen to me. But I'm not going to try to chase you. I'm going to replace you. My bad. I, I went on Coach Care mode. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, a lot of people take opinions from people that just don't have what they want in life. So um, you're the only person that walked across a straight stage um, 
that made six figures at your position. Mm. That's huge. That's huge. Um, I don't know any executive sales director. I mean, there's probably, but you were the only executive sales director that made six figures. I mean, I know not everybody could do that, but man, what does it take for someone like yourself to be, to be that, to be successful at that position? Um, being coachable, being humble, right? Like, think about it like this, you know, you, uh, I was your supervisor at one point, but because I always show so much love to you and all the other employees, you know, you reached out to me with Alfred and then now, you know, I'm being, the mentor is being mentored. It's a mentee. Think about that. That means I had to eat a lot of humble pie. I can't be on this high horse. My ego in my pocket. Ego stands for edging God out. <laughs> right? So if 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 I didn't, if I if I didn't just if I wasn't coachable, man. So I would say be coachable. Focus more on personal development. Focus more on yourself. Focus more on yourself. And then and then the third thing I would say is what I did was. Oh, I made a lot of sacrifices. So when my homeboys called me, um, think about it. The story I was just telling you when I was asking to be a supervisor, the sacrifice, you know, I, I cut my hair. I changed my wardrobe. I got laughed at consistently. I didn't go play basketball. I always try to stay late. Same thing with this. How I became a six figure earner. I just kept my head down. And then I saw you. You, I think you had got a half a million dollar ring, and I'm like, bro, I need to get that ring. And then I, and then I, um, Johnny Newsom, Johnny Newsom, I said, Johnny Newsom, man, come on over here, man. Let me see that ring, bro. Let me get practice, man. Let me get practice. So, uh, 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 I saw your ring. I got Johnny Newsom ring. I still got that picture, bro. And I put that ring on my finger. I'm like, man, I'm gonna get my ring, man. I don't know when, but I'm gonna get mine. And I said, I said, what's the first ring you got to get? He said, six-figure earner. I said, what's this? He said, half of me. I said, I'm going to get that too. I said, but I'm going to get that six-figure earner ring first. So I had the vision, and I didn't stop. So when my homeboys was calling me to go play basketball, bro, I can't do it. I'm working on my empire. When my friends was calling me, hey, man, we got a party to go to. I can't do it, man. I'm working on my empire. When my mom was calling me, Kevin, <laughs> you know, telling me something about this. Mom, I can't talk right now. I'm working on my empire. So I had to I had to just ha I had to be laser focused and I focused more on helping my team to have success than my own success because if I help all everybody get what they want, I'm going to get what I want. Wow, man, I appreciate that. Um I mean, what are the, what are the investments you got, you know, you looking into um stock wise? I mean, watching right now oh man you you tripping man we, <laughs> you, we <laughs> this ain't that kind of lie pimp. we can't we can't be just gonna, hey hold on first of all guys and and, and, and real talk hey man i mean I, I know i know but guys like bruce is a real person he's really trying to help y'all like genuinely right so we giving you something that people won't they won't tell you so okay so the stock but well, first of all let me tell you why here's the thing what rich people are doing rich people are not scared they know that the stocks are going low so guess what they're doing they're buying right carnival cruise the cruise lines no one can get on the cruise but that's not going to be forever you buy the stocks now no one really is flying we got a friend of ours he's um he's a he's a flight attendant they're only doing 20, 30 people on the flight, but they're making money from cargo, right? They're transporting mail from state to state. That's how they're making a lot of their money right now. So now the stocks for JetBlue is going down. Delta, Spirit is going down. That's when you buy the stocks. And guys, you don't have to have a lot of money. Man, you got an extra $100. Get into the stock. The stock's going to go up, right? Anything that you can think of. Look at Zoom. Guys, we're doing a Facebook Live through Zoom. The stock for Zoom went through the roof. Just be a, go ahead. All that Zoom stock went up crazy. Netflix stock went up crazy. We just, we just gotta be aware. Anything associated to this, dog. My wife bought a stock 
Um, I forgot what the name of it, it is. But anyway, it was a company that was supposed to be working on a vaccine. I don't know if it was like three, four dollars. Day one, stock went up to 17, 18 dollars. The next day she doubled her money. But we just gotta be aware of what to look for. But it goes back to the environment, it goes back to the leadership. Uh, you're into stocks. So again, eagles hang with eagles. Right, so I just would say the stocks right now. I'm not really into anything else. I'm investing into my team. Um, I invest into you know social media ads, but when it comes to other streams of income, shoot, in this business we get paid six ways. So uh, between that and the stocks, that's all I'm really focused on right now because um, I just yeah I want I don't I, I don't really want to do too much when it comes to that. But now you told me about this uh, this silver, so you already know I'm doing that next. You know, I just I just appreciate you, man. And um, it's other investments and other things that I'm going to be getting into. Um, I'm, I'm eventually going to be learning some of the things that you learn when it comes to the trading. Um, but if I want to I want to I want to say this and I think this is this is important. Um, if you are, if you're an entrepreneur at heart or you really want to do something different, uh, get your spouse on board. And, and even if they don't do it, that's fine. Now, if it's in your heart to do it right then 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 do it right if my if your spouse is trying to get you to stop i had a lady wanted to do the business but i think she's like arabic or something and her husband told her not to do it so i told her i'm gonna get him on the phone with my wife i don't want your wife pimp i'm sorry i'm good so if 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 if, if you're watching this and and you want to do a business or your girl want to do a business or your guy want to do a business just support them just support them like you 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 can't you can't you can't get rich at a job you can't pass your job on to your kids and if you want to do that shame on you so i want to i want to say that to couples build something together you and your wife are building something together our mentor Alfred Nixon and his wife build something together. Ashley Henry and his wife building something together. We're, I'm building something together with my wife, and we're also helping couples. You know, uh, uh, Tammy and her husband uh, um, 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 Alonzo, they're building something together. So, you know, I, I just want to stress that that when it's a when it's when it's power in numbers, right? As soon as my wife joined my team, um, I, I we got more Hispanics. We I got more organized. You know. Now the goal is to get her out of her job so she can be doing this with me full time. As a matter of fact, she made more money last week than she worked at her job doing this business. Imagine if I would have listened to her and not do the business. Right? So guys, I just want to let you know, man, if it's something that's in your heart, do it. Whoever don't support you, then you know what? You got to grind even harder to show them. And that's all I did. I kept my head down. And I show people that it's possible. Because nobody, you became the first millionaire in your family. I'm going to be becoming the first millionaire in my family. But again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. People got to find the right mentor, man. They got to find the right person that genuinely going to care. That's why I'm telling people, like, you really care. You, 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 we, we supposed to be talking about my other stuff. You, you giving them the game on stocks. I don't want them to make my stock go up. You feel me? I don't want. I don't want to be taking my shares. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's all good though. <laughs> well, we excited and we ignited, like you always say, right? <laughs> yeah, man, man. And shouts out to you, man, just for your mentorship, your guidance, man. Um, even in this, even doing this live, man. And um, I just appreciate you. I appreciate Nandy for allowing me to kind of grab you whenever I want. Shouts out to her. Uh, and all the boss ladies that we have that's, that's just been consistent um, and, and, and I'm going to tell you I'm going to be straight up since we've been straight up 100 on this guys it's not easy being married to a high performance player I don't care how much money Bruce make his wife going to tell you it's not easy 
Why? Because his mindset is positive. He don't get caught up in the drama. He don't get caught up in the craziness. He got laser focus. No matter how positive and how excited I am, it's not easy to be with me. It's not easy. Because I don't allow anything negative to come in my way. I don't allow anything that's... If somebody tell me if, I don't know how to spell if. That's two letters. I'll try. I don't know how to spell try. That's three letters. Somebody say, uh, 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 you know, uh, how are we going to do that? Don't worry about the how. You just do the activity. Let God do the how, right? And when you married to somebody with that type of mindset, like we had the, um, we had a huge promotion. My whole team was pushing. I missed the promotion. I'm in the group. My team like, oh, my God, coach, you missed a promotion. I said, that's cool. I'm not ready to be promoted. Y'all not ready. I don't deserve to be promoted. And that's a hard conversation to have. And people are looking on the outside like, bro, you deserve it. Nope, I don't deserve it. I ain't ready yet. When it's time, it's going to happen. And I told my team, we got to develop. And when they heard me say that, they like, bro, this man went up 2, 3 in the morning grinding. And my wife said, babe, how do you recover so fast? Personal development. There's no failures. There's lessons. I needed to learn a lesson. I needed to learn something. And when the promotions happen, it's going to happen organically. I don't have to do nothing crazy for it to happen. And it's going to happen, man. So, man, I just, again, man, I appreciate you. Uh, even doing this live with me, you you got 4,000 ages. You could have picked a lot of people. <laughs> so, you know, I just I just really, again, appreciate your love, your your dedication to seeing me succeed. Um, and, and if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for Alfred, uh, if it wasn't for even, uh, you know, Josney, uh, uh, Evan Rose, Everton, my entire team, my wife, my even my kids. Guys, I'm going to tell you all a quick story. Bro, one day, uh, Bruce tell us, man, you got, you know, you know, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce going to make you go hard. Uh, you know, one agent, one customer. i never forget, bro. I was going to pick my son up because I was telling my son and my daughter I need to get one customer, one agent. I didn't get a customer, I didn't get an agent. Bro, I'm scared to pick my son up. Because you know what my son asked me? Daddy, did you get a customer? Did you get an agent today? I didn't want to tell him no. I did not want to tell him no. When I told him no, I didn't get a customer or agent. Guess what I did, bro? The, the rest of the night, I'm grinding to get that customer or agent. Showing my 11-year-old son I did it. Why, guys? Kids don't, they don't listen to nothing we tell them. They do what we do. If we perform at a high level, they gonna perform at a high level. So have an accountability partner. I don't care if it's your wife, your daughter, your sister, your brother, your cousin. I don't care if it's your, your mentor. Have somebody that's gonna hold you accountable. And when my son was coming up to me every day and I told him, son, I got a customer, I got an agent. I felt good because I'm showing him Yesterday, I didn't get a customer, but today, I got two. Today, I got three. Today, we did this, and that's what's going to change his mindset, and that breaks a cycle of us as, of, of us as men showing how these young princes, how they're going to be kings. Woo. Yeah, that's deep. Hey, that is deep, man. Wow, man, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Your leadership is like woo, up there, man. Now, a lot of books, and we always talk about leaders or readers. And that's one thing I can definitely say that you've installed in me when I was working at the calls. It's like, Bruce, I need you to read this book. I'm like, read a book? I ain't reading no book. <laughs> and the book was much that for that. Um, I did read it at that time, and I learned about the difference between employee, self employed, business owner, investor, I didn't even, I never knew anything about that. And um, that definitely opened up my mind to really want to start a business. I remember I was looking at all types of businesses. I'm like, damn, I don't got this type of bread. I was literally going to start saving my tax money just my first business. But um, I appreciate you because that seed you planted it to me, was it maybe uh, how many years ago, 11, 12 years ago? Wow. That's the planet. That one book you gave me, look what it did. Boom. So I never forget that. And I appreciate everything you've done. And sometimes people don't know what the little thing they can do to change someone's life. Mm. Like even now with this video, with this live you're doing, 
bro, you, 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 God's gonna always continue to bless you because, and we're not, you're not perfect. I'm not, per none of us are perfect, but we strive to be. And we just wanna be a better version of ourselves the next day, man. So you doing this live, thousands, thousands of people are gonna be impacted because you decided to do a live to, 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 to interview me and you drop jewels like some people some people make it they're a million dollar earner two million three million dollar earner you have everything that people want but then they forget about everybody else who who's a beginning entrepreneur who's thinking about making that shift into entrepreneurship you know um and and just man shouts out to you man just for always being selfless and just thinking about the little per remember we was there <laughs> we was there you know what i'm saying so the books um man the books are and i don't even read fast you know somebody may read something in one minute and bro i might have to read it five to, again i was a dc student i wasn't that smart but one thing i did know if this guy has if this guy have millions of dollars and he's doing successful i ain't dumb my mom ain't read carol blake did not raise no food i copied the right cat and I got what exactly, and I'm getting what you what you got at the beginning, and I'm gonna get there too. It's just gonna take time. So man, um, that seed years ago, man, you, you think about it, and you came back and brought me out of. Think about that craziness, bro. That's crazy. Full circle. Full was, circle. He was allowing me to leave work early to go to those meetings, which you still almost got fired for. Yeah, bro. Oh, yeah, 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 dog. So, and then, and then, you freaking, bro. I said, I said, you ask me for my check, your check. I said, I said, Bruce, bro. I need you to come to work tomorrow, man. You know, pep. Hey, pep. If you watching this, pep, I appreciate you for not firing me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you. If you did not give me that opportunity, pep, um, to become a supervisor, that changed my life. Changed my life, man. Nobody believes. Nobody believes, man. So, like, if you, if you guys in the Bible it says, you know, you need to have faith the size of a mustard seed. And that's the same thing that I saw in Bruce. Like I believed in him. I believed in all of my employees, but I just paid it for it. Like everybody laughed. Pep, I asked Pep, what do I need to do to get better? That's like a brand new agent asking me, Coach Kev, what do I need to do? And you gotta give people what they need to do so they know what adjustments they gotta make. And when he did that for me, I just wanted to do that for all the employees. So it's like the times when, you know, you ask for the check or you ask to leave early. I didn't know what you needed to leave early for, but it was for a reason. I didn't know what you needed your check for, but it was for a reason. And just planting those seeds, man. Uh, I remember the first time I met Nandy, you know, I, I just remember the first time I seen your daughter and I'm like, damn, this is why this man grinded. This is why he's, he's, he's doing he's making money off uh, 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 gambling he's making money doing this he's doing trades he's doing you're doing everything that you could do and sometimes we all just need that one break bro that one break so i ain't mean to get emotional it was it's crazy nah man because you really like hit some points because you know i was called all kind of names you know we'll get a real job um basically worthless, piece of shit. <laughs> and like everything I did was always about trying to make more money than I was originally getting. Like I was never satisfied with the paycheck I was getting. When I was getting checks for 500, I wanted to be a thousand. When mm. I was getting 1,000, I wanted to be 2,000. I was never content with the money because 
I knew the type of lifestyle that I wanted to live for my family. And for my daughter looking at me like, you know what I'm saying? I, I just didn't want to be that person, that father to, dis to disappoint my, my daughters. So I've always was taking risks. Man, I remember going to the casino, pulling my checks, <laughs> playing poker. I remember betting on a football game, trying to flip my money. I remember taking my rent money to start a business, losing everything. I remember giving this dude 50 grand, lost everything. Like, I constantly lost money. But risk takers are not money makers. I constantly took risks. So y'all see y'all, oh, he making seven figures. Oh, he driving a Lamborghini. Y'all ain't see all the money I lost. I remember dropping 10 grand, five grand in my Forex account. Money gone, blown it, boom, gone. Gone. Damn. I'm talking about that thing stayed negative. Like, I owe the broker. I owe the broker, Kevin. Wow. <laughs> like, somebody right now put their money in the stock market, they probably negative. They 401k probably looking crazy right now. But they ain't gonna tell that though. So I'm just thankful, man. Listen, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. That's all I gotta say. I'm just thankful. I'm thankful for my friends, family. I'm thankful for the roof over my head. I'm thankful for just everything, everything. Even if the material things are gone, at least I got my family and the people who I love. Well, listen, man, and um, just again, man, this is this is the season. Uh, we just getting warmed up, guys. They're gonna be they're gonna be building statues about what we about to do uh, in in this industry. Uh, the reason why I'm so fired up and I love what we do is because we're actually helping people. We're giving people hope. Uh, we're hope dealers. We're PPSs, professional problem solvers. You know. Uh, and we're helping people get their life back. I know it's a lot of people that have a lot of money, but they time broke. You know, you either can have money with no time, or you can have time with no money. But when you got both, you live in, you live in heaven on earth, man. So uh, what we're doing is a game changer. And uh, we have the ability to create and teach people that they can create whatever life they want. I told this lady the other day, this lady was like, damn. I said, ma'am, I'm going to show you how to create a life that you don't need a vacation from. I'm going to say that again. I said, I'm going to help you create a life that you don't need a vacation from. And she was like, wow. I said, name one thing that you would love to do that you've been wanting to do. She said, I just want to travel. I said, well, you ain't going to travel right now because it is Corona. But <laughs> I said, but uh, that's one thing we're going to put on your bucket list and we're going to make it happen. I said, but, but you're going to have to push through the door because there's going to be opposition. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be ups. There's going to be down. It's going to be a lot of great things that happen, and I need you to stay hungry. It's going to be a challenges, and I need you to stay focused. And I need you to go hard. Don't look left. Don't look right. And everything's going to be all right. Guys, it's going to be a moment where Bruce going to have 10, 15, 20, 30,000 people within his organization. So a lot. But the real question, those of you who are watching is, how many people are you going to have in your organization? What sacrifices are you going to make? When are you going to start betting on yourself? When are you going to start telling yourself you can do this? When are you going to start taking your whole life to a next level? When are you going to read your next book? When are you going to start uh, 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 making, making, making you a priority, right? Helping everybody. Yeah, you can help everybody. Yeah, you can keep going to church, but God is giving you what you got to go. Why you keep asking questions about what he just gave you and then you still praying about what you just prayed for? You need to move. You need to take action. People are always talking about uh, faith without work is dead. Bro, you need to work. I tell people all the time, I can bring you to the well or I'm going to watch you die right by the well. And if you die by the well, I'm going to check them pockets. Wow, man. <laughs> real talk. That is so real, bro. Like, people praying about what they just paid for. <laughs> yeah. Like they get ready to get ready. That's it, bro. <laughs> that's it. Oh, oh, I'm gonna start this when everything right, bro. That's like you leaving a house when all the lights green. You ain't never leaving. All the lights never gonna be green. If me and you would have waited the perfect time to have kids, we still won't have kids. <laughs> Imagine that, bro. Our our moms made it happen. Your mom, my mom. 
they, they, we just, they just had kids, but they made it happen with less than what we have. They raised kids. Right. And, and I think people are waiting for the perfect moment to say, Oh, when I get this, or when this happened, and guess what? It never happened. <laughs> create it. They could create that opportunity, man. So, uh, you know, if there's no more questions, we can, we can close this out. I got to promote this webinar that you're going to be doing tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> good, man. I appreciate you, guys. Coach Kev, uh, for everything that you do. Friendship. I appreciate everything. We out. We out.